In this video, we're going to talk about some inequalities involving dot products. So here's the first question, which of these is greater? And when you're comparing, you'll assume that these vectors are non-zero, their magnitude is not equal to zero. So on the left hand side, you have a mod of the dot product, mod of a vector dot b vector. And on the right hand side, you have mod of a vector times mod of b vector. And at first, they both look similar, but this dot will change things. Now pause the video, think about which side is greater. All right, let's do this together. This dot product is actually equal to mod of a vector, mod of b vector times cos of theta. And when you take the mod of this entire thing, you'll get mod of cos theta as well. All three things are in mod. Now let's compare both these sides. This side has mod of a vector times mod of b vector. This side also has these two things, but it also has something extra. It has mod of cos of theta. And will cos of theta make the left hand side greater or less than the right hand side? Think about it. Cos of theta will never have values more than one. In fact, cos of theta ranges from minus one to one. So mod of cos theta will be from zero to one. This means mod of cos theta will always be less than equal to one. And because we're multiplying by something that's less than equal to one, this means we're bringing this side down. This means this left hand side will always be less than equal to this right hand side. Take any value of cos theta, half, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, even one, whatever value you pick, you will always be less than equal to this right hand side. So this is our first inequality. Mod of cos of theta is making this left hand side less than equal to this right hand side. Now, here's a question. When are these two sides equal? So these two sides are equal when this thing does not bring this left hand side down. And when does that happen? When mod of cos theta is exactly equal to one. And when does that happen? That happens when cos of theta equals to one or cos of theta equals to minus one. In both cases, the mod is equal to one and both the sides are equal. And when is cos theta equal to one? That's when theta equals to zero. And this other case, when cos theta equals to minus one, that's when theta is equal to pi. Now let's visualize this. What's happening when the angle between these two vectors is zero or pi? If it's zero, then they're facing the same direction. And if it's pi, then they're facing the opposite direction. In both the cases, we can say that these vectors are collinear. Here's a visual. If this is a vector and this is b vector, they're both facing the same direction. The angle between them is zero. And if they're facing the opposite direction, the angle between them is 180 degrees. In both the cases, these vectors lie along the same line. In fact, they are collinear. In any other scenario, for example, if b vector is like this, then the angle between them is not zero and not pi. This means cos of theta will be something less than one. This means this left hand side will be less than the right hand side. So this was about the product. Let's talk about the sum. Again, the same question, which of these is greater? And we have to assume non-zero vectors. On the left hand side, we have mod of a vector plus b vector. We have the mod of the sum. And on the right hand side, we have the sum of the mods. We have mod of a vector plus mod of b vector. So which of these two sides is greater? Pause the video, think about it. All right. The answer is in this case as well, the right hand side is greater than equal to the left hand side. Here's an explanation. If the vectors are like this, if this is our a vector and this is our b vector. Now by triangle law of addition, this is our a plus b vector. And in this triangle, sum of two sides will always be greater than or equal to the third side. We can say that mod of a vector plus mod of b vector, the sum of these two sides will always be greater than this third side. That's mod of a plus b vector. So looking at this triangle, we can say that the right hand side will always be greater than or equal to the left hand side. And again, the same question, when are they equal? That happens when this triangle collapses, when this is a vector and this is b vector, and they're both facing the same direction. Now a plus b vector will look like this. It will be on top of both of them. In this case, a plus b vector mod of this will exactly be equal to mod of a vector plus mod of b vector. And what happens when they're facing the opposite direction? Let's look at that case as well. If this is a vector and b vector is facing in the opposite direction, in this case, a plus b vector looks like this. It's, it's in this direction. In this case, 
these two do not add up to this one the sum of these two do not add up to this third one so this does not work in this case so these two sides are equal when we are facing the same direction but they're not equal when we are facing the opposite direction all right now this is a visual proof we can also prove it using dot products let's do that let's take the dot product of a vector plus b vector with itself a vector plus b vector dot a vector plus b vector so what do we get we get two vectors with same magnitude facing the same direction so we have mod of a vector plus b vector times mod of a vector plus b vector times cos of 0 that's equal to 1 and what do we get when we expand this so this is a vector dot a vector plus b vector dot b vector plus 2 times a vector dot b vector so this is our right hand side this becomes mod of a vector square plus mod of b vector square plus 2 times a vector dot b vector now this is where the dot product is all other terms are real all other terms are mod of something all right now how do we proceed well you have to convert this into mod as well because the inequality only has mod so how do we do that we can say that anything is always less than equal to the mod of that thing 4 is less than equal to mod of 4 20 is less than equal to mod of 20 minus 3 is less than equal to mod of minus 3 and similarly 2 times a vector dot b vector will always be less than equal to mod of itself that's mod of 2 times a vector dot b vector so here's where we can introduce the inequality this right hand side will always be less than equal to this thing so we have mod of a square plus mod of b square same terms but this one is replaced with mod of 2 a vector dot b vector this will always be greater than equal to this which means this entire thing will always be greater than equal to this entire thing now how do we proceed from here we can use what we just proved before here we have mod of a vector dot b vector that's always less than equal to mod of a vector times mod of b vector so this thing will always be less than equal to 2 times mod of a vector times mod of b vector so this will help us get rid of the dot and here's what we have we have this that's always less than equal to this so we substituted this with this that's 2 times mod of a vector mod of b vector this is always greater than equal to this this is always greater than equal to this which means this thing is always greater than equal to this thing so what do we have here we have mod of a square plus mod of b square plus 2 times mod of a mod of b this is an identity this is x plus y square so this is equal to mod of a plus mod of b whole square and what's on the left hand side we have the square of mod of a plus b and both of these things are positive both of these things are mod so we can take the square root so finally we have mod of a plus mod of b on the right hand side and on the left hand side we have mod of a plus b so this mod of sum of vectors will always be less than or equal to this which is the sum of mod of these vectors now i personally prefer the visual proof but sometimes proving this rigorously is also important and what are the names of these inequalities this first one mod of a vector dot b vector is always less than or equal to mod of a vector times mod of b vector this is called the cauchy schwartz inequality and this next one where we deal with the sum and not product mod of a plus b is less than or equal to mod of a plus mod of b this is called the triangle inequality probably because this can be proved using a triangle so these are the two inequalities now before we wrap up here's a question that's practical which one is better if you have to prove collinearity so if you have to prove that two vectors are collinear which inequality should we use let's look at the two inequalities let's look at the cases where both the sides are equal for the first one mod of a vector dot b vector that's equal to mod of a vector times mod of b vector both sides are equal that happens when these two vectors are collinear it happens when they're facing the same direction here theta is zero and it also happens when they're facing the opposite direction that's when theta equals to pi but this other inequality let's look at this as well when are these two sides equal these two are equal when the triangle collapses when they're facing the same direction so this works for same or opposite direction but this only works for the same direction as we have seen this does not work for the opposite direction so if you have to prove collinearity between two vectors we should use this first inequality we should prove that mod of their dot product is equal to the product of their mods 
because this other inequality does not work in the other case. So here are two vectors which are facing the opposite direction. They are still collinear. They are also collinear, but this inequality does not show this. But that doesn't mean that this one is not useful. This shows that both these vectors are facing the same direction. So when we have to prove that both the vectors are facing the same direction, we will not use this. We will use this one. So if you have to prove the vectors are collinear, prove this. And if you have to prove that the vectors are facing the same direction, prove this.